Hello, my name is Damian Shabu, and I'm an application engineer with Yokogawa Corporation of America. In the second part of my video series, I'll be discussing how to use a function generator to simulate cam and crank sensor signals, essentially simulating an engine to be used for a systems validation test. The signals that are generated by the cam and crank sensors depend on a variety of different parameters, such as engine manufacturer, number of cylinders, and engine displacement. For this particular example, I'll be simulating an inline four-cylinder, four-stroke engine. So basically, in a four-stroke engine, you have 16 crank pulses and one pulse of cam. So basically, the camshaft rotates once for every two rotations of the crankshaft. To simulate these signals, I'll be using a Yokogawa FG420 arbitrary function generator. This particular signal generator comes with a free piece of software known as the arbitrary edit software. This software gives you the complete freedom to create almost any type of waveform you desire. The software also comes with some basic preloaded waveforms such as sine, triangle, square, noise, DC volt signals, and a bunch of other ones. The software allows you to edit these waveforms as desired. For simplicity purposes, I'll be adding a couple of these preloaded waveforms and using them for this application. To create a signal for crank is rather simple. We know that a typical crank sensor signal looks like this. Since it looks somewhat similar to a triangle, I can go ahead and use a preloaded signal for a triangle and then modify it slightly to make it look like a zero crossing signal needed for a magnetic variable reluctance crank sensor. Now that it has been modified, you can see that it indeed does resemble a crank sensor signal. For a cam signal, it's really just the pulse as shown here. So to create this signal, we can use a signal for a square wave and then edit it to get the desired waveform. As you can see here, I was able to create a pulse wave to simulate a Hall Effect cam sensor. Now that the waveforms have been created, I simply connect the instrument via USB to the PC and then upload the waveforms. Once all the waveforms are on the signal generator, I can go ahead and set up my scaling factor so that when we adjust the frequency, it will be units of RPM. This is rather simple to set up on the instrument. Under the utility menu, there's an option for user units. Once you're in this menu, you're able to create and customize the units of measurement you desire, as well as name the units accordingly. As you can see here, I have set my units and my ratio accordingly. Once the waveform has been created, another great feature that the signal generator has is the ability to phase lock the signals together. Using the both feature, I'm able to phase lock the signals, so that way, when adjusting the knob for frequency, which is RPM in this case, the value will change on both channels simultaneously. So now that the signal generator has been fully configured to simulate cam and crank sensor signals, we will go ahead and verify that we output the correct RPM and we'll also verify that our engine is functioning in an appropriate manner. As mentioned in my previous video, I'll be using the signal generator to simulate the sensor signals that we are connecting to our AEM engine controller, which will cause it to fire its injector and ignition outputs. All of this data will be monitored on our data acquisition. I will also be loading the AEM ECU software on my PC so we can validate all of our measurements between the ECU and data acquisition. For this test, I will go ahead and set the signal generator to 6,000 RPM. If you look at the software on my PC, you can see that we are indeed measuring 6,000 RPM. Now, if you look at our data acquisition, you can see that all of our injector and ignition outputs are functioning properly, and I'm also reading 6,000 RPM. We have successfully used the signal generator to simulate cam and crank signals from an ECU. Thank you for watching this video. In the next and final video in this three-part series, I'll be discussing how to validate measurements from your ECU using the data acquisition. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact an application engineer here at Yokogawa or visit us at tmi.yokogawa.com.